that there, hoping to not drag out the introduction for four minutes again like on the Izanami video. <laughs> I pretty much already said what I needed to at the start of that anyways, I think. So anyways, uh, just like I said last week after Izanami's video, which unfortunately I apparently missed one or two things on her, which sucks. I, 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 I failed you. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. I'm pretty sure I was very thorough with Nine here, but uh, like I said last week, I was doing Izanami Showcase. This week we're looking at Unlimited Nine. Ugh. I, I hate Nine. I'm, I know everyone already knows that. I make it, dr I make it clearly, I make it so, so obvious, and I constantly repeat it at just about any opportunity I get, but it, it just cannot be exaggerated. The disgust I have for this character. And the fact that it has greatly increased in the process of making this video as I kept going between Unlimited 9 and Normal 9's character files looking for changes to, to document for this in-depth showcase. And, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stop there. This is probably gonna be a long one because she does have a pretty beefy change list, so... Uh, any, any, any fellow haters of 9... I, I heavily suggest you immediately click off this video because I, I, I don't know this might cause you to have an aneurysm or something. I hope you're uh, for, the, for those of you who stay. I hope you're ready for our in-depth look at essentially Central Fiction's own version of Boss Margaret from Ultimax. Because and, and although Unlimited Nine is definitely not as cheap as Boss Margaret, she's in in terms of in comparison to everything else we've gotten in Blaze Blue. She, she's definitely at that tier. Even if Unlimited 9, personally, in my opinion, still isn't the cheapest Unlimited they've done, she's she's definitely a, 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 vi a viable contender for it. Anyways, that aside, might as well get on to what you all came here for and what I hopefully will finish as soon as possible so that I don't have to be disgusted anymore. Any case, obvious changes first, as per usual. Uh, she's got a beefier health bar. In fact, she actually has the same amount of health as Unlimited Izanami at 15,500. And another thing similarly to Izanami is that her character combo rate has been up from 60 to 70. Once again, I am not uh, knowledgeable, nor do I understand the descriptions I've read enough to give a detailed explanation on character combo rate. Probably just look that up yourself if you're curious. Another thing common to Izanami is that Unlimited 9 has a 10% damage bonus because this character needed more damage, right? She needed more damage, right? Uh, her walk speed went up 30%. Yeah, that's it's pretty minor, but yeah, you know. She, she can't exactly have faster dash moves speed given how her dashes work, but so she, she walks faster. That, that's literally it about that. Um, unlike Izanami and some other Unlimiteds back in the CP era, um, Nine does, in fact, have her old Overdrive active by default, as if she whiffs a spell normal, uh, she still gets spell stocks, which is fucking disgusting, which means you can just whiff normals at full screen and get free shit for it, because why the fuck not? And similar to Izanami as well, her overdrive always lasts 10 seconds at high health and also on low health. I set the wrong health bar low, I'm a god. Oh, you know, something I should probably also note real quick, I'm sorry. Uh, I assume some of you who may be new are noticing the English 9 voice? Um, I haven't actually put the download link to this since I did a run with her on Limited Mars, so, uh, to anyone that wants the English dub 9 voice, I will put the download for that in the description of the video here, just to kind of, uh, resurrect it from being buried under past uploads. <laughs> that aside, uh, okay, now, now we're getting into the, now we're getting into the disgusting shit. Although, let me just check something real quick that I noticed just now. Oh, okay. Okay, well, let's get that out of the way first. Because I actually didn't notice this somehow while I was testing, but I just picked it up just now. When nine, when Unlimited 9 casts a spell, she'll change her Flax Nurture buff 
to the element of the last spell you used, because the last spell I used, were, the last normal I did was a bean almost, so I got wind, and wind was the last element I had stocked. So if I do water, and then do lapis, I get ice, and if I do fire, I get fire. Wind, I get wind. So, she can swap between flax nurture buffs, I guess, based on which element she used last before casting her spells. <clears throat> So, that's a neat little thing that I almost overlooked, <laughs> but luckily picked up on while recording this. Speaking of 9's Flax Nurture buffs, as you can see, Unlimited 9 starts with her Fire one, active by default. And, uh, the Flax Nurture buffs remain permanent once they're active. You can only have one at a time, though, so you have to pick if you want Fire, if you want Wind, if you want Water. But, uh, yeah... Whichever buff she has active, obviously, as per normal, her, uh... The normals pertain to the element for... She starts off with fire every match, so for fire normals right now... Get chip damage. I need to actually turn off regenerate for that. Her fire normals get chip damage. Her other elements do not have chip damage, as you can see. Unless I swap... To water. And then her A normals have chip damage. As well as extra damage, because as you can see at the start of the match, she does 660 as per 10% damage bonus with her 5A. But, if I have the water buff active, or ice, 726. Let's see, anything else? Yeah, the normal shit of Evelyn, she comes active again. Yeah, an additional 10% damage buff that stacks with her passive. So, 726 per normal. For standing all I should say. I'm not gonna actually go into the damage amounts for all of her crouching ones. That seems a little excessive. You can do the math yourself there. So, Flax Nurture buffs are permanent once active. She can swap between them pretty easily without having to do another Flax Nurture. Um, although, obviously, as you can see, if she does do another Flax Nurture, she gets a random buff automatically. If she, for some reason, doesn't is too lazy to swap manually, I guess. But we'll go back to more of what Flax Nurture does Later, as we now get to go into the main sort of brunt of Unlimited 9's changes. Her fucking Minazuki looking Wesker ass teleport spam was buffed to high hell with this character. Let me see, how many lines of did I write on her change list? Just about her teleports. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12 lives just on her teleports here. Okay, where, where do I even start? Her teleports are all around faster and are literally about 50% less punishable. There is half as much of a gap to punish these fucking obnoxious things as they're already, like, the gap is already short enough, but now it's even shorter. So, good luck punishing her when she's doing this the whole fucking time. Her forward dash teleport will uh, always warp automatically behind the opponent, like so. Uh, her air one does not do this, but her grounded dash will always track to the opponent's location right behind them. I believe you can actually throw her on reaction to this, though. Yes, you can. <laughs> Good luck reacting to that, though. Let's see. I will know that there is one flaw between Unlimited 9 and Normal 9 that I have uh, can tell here. So, a Normal 9 can sort of, uh, chain teleports together. You can do another teleport, and then if you want to, you can, uh, do another one right after without really running out of invulnerability. Uh, Unlimited 9 can't do that. There's a, there's a noticeable delay. It seems like it's the same speed because of the reduced recovery and stuff on, on Unlimited 9, but they don't seem, as you can see, they don't seamlessly chain together. Like normal 9 does right there. That's one downside and a mountain of upsides, though. But going back to those upsides, though, uh, her air teleport dashes go further. Like so. An easy way to... Luckily... You see, that's the convenient thing. We can have both normal 9 and limited 9 on the same screen here. So, normal 9's forward dash goes... Obviously, look, from round start position, lands in front of a limited 9. Unlimited 9's goes over her head and lands behind her. And to clear up some a misconception, or uh, she actually does not have necessarily new like two, three, six teleports. Unlimited nine. Okay, I'm gonna just say in in a really condensed manner. 
Unlimited 9 has 8-way teleports. 8-way teleports! Don't believe me? Check this shit out. So if you do forward dash, if you hold up and forward during her forward dash, she appears in the air above her opponent for easy overheads. If you do, if you say jump up in the air and hit to uh, down down really quickly, she teleports downward. If you air dash forward and hold down forward, she goes to the ground. If you back dash in the air and hold down and back, she goes diagonally back. So as you can see, she even has an air, she even has an upward teleport. So she basically has four jumps because of that. Uh, not necessarily because she can't really. Oh yeah, she can't actually cancel out of them with normal. So yeah, she basically has four jumps. Although I'm not really sure how to. Uh, <laughs> I haven't messed around enough to assume that you can do anything like super cool with that. But I'm guessing you probably can with enough practice. So yeah, Unlimited 9 has 8-way teleports. It's pretty fast. You have to do it the motion, especially on the upward teleport. You have to do it pretty fast to not get a uh, double jump instead. But uh, yeah, and she can just... Uh, yeah. Down back. Uh, even from back dashing, she can go upwards. So as you can see, her mobility is just... Yeah. If this wasn't a showcase video, I would edit in Blood Red Moon and a bunch of fucking Minazuki laughing voice lines because this is exactly what it reminds me of and it's giving me PTSD. Uh, anything else on the 8-way teleport? Let's see. Yeah, basically pressing left, right, up, or down during any teleport will have 9 and move in that additional direction. Obviously, the uh, direction you press first, up, down, forward, or back, uh, takes priority, and then the diagonals kind of kick in after that. Yeah. Okay, fortunately that's, uh, oh. Uh, teleports can cancel into normals once she reappears, by the way, so you can do, uh, that. And, uh, also, the normals can cancel into teleports! Amazing! This is so fun, even on block! Cancel the teleport even on block, just be completely safe, yep. Block 5 C and up, teleport back full screen. And then go back in behind her for a cross-up. <laughs> oh, Arc System works. Why? Why couldn't you give teleport spam to Izanami? She deserves it more. Not this stupid bitch. Ugh. Okay. In any case, that's enough about her teleports. That's, that's really all for her teleports. Uh, the next change is actually about her drives. Um, this is a little hard to explain, sort of, or at least I'm going to overly complicate it and fuck it up in some way. But um, I'm just going to read off what I wrote here on her change list here. Uh, nine can chain together same element spells in succession if she has more than one in her stock. So, for example, if I have two waters and I hit D... Obviously, that expends it for a level 2 spell, and because it's a limited 9, gives her her Flax Nurture buff. But, if I have two stocks of water, and I hit D twice, she actually does the second attack. Because the first one is actually her level 1. And if I have three waters, and I hit D three times, she goes into all three. And that nearly got 4k meterless. I'm... Oh my god. But yeah, so basically, uh, doesn't really work if you have mixed elements, because obviously you just cast your spell. But if you have three waters, or like, two or more waters, winds... Here's what wind looks like. I do kind of like how that looks. And then fire... Is also pretty good. So yeah, she can spam spells out of the same element in very quick succession by just pressing D extra times, assuming she has the extra stocks. If she just has one, though, you only get one. Like I said, it's correspondent to how many of the same element you have in your current stock right now. And the entire stock is uh, consumed upon using it, so there's really no reason for you not to cancel into the fall, which is going to eat all of your stocks anyways. And uh, even if the spell whiffs as well... She can still go into the second one. 
so that's another little annoying thing she can do. And okay, now we go into <laughs> all the shit they did to her special, the, her specials, and they did. They basically went ahead and decided to go 101 overkill and just buff basically every single spell she has. I think, like, only one or two spells are more or less the same as they are for normal 9, but... <sighs> I might as well get into that one. Let's start off with everyone's favorite, Kunzite. Rock, which I'm gonna now have to try and remember all the spell combos off the top of my head here because I don't have them noted down in the change list here. So I believe Kunzite is water, water, fire. No, that's fire, fire, water. Yep, there we go. Kunzite is twice as big <laughs> as normal. Nope, fucked up. Nope, fucked up again. Kunzite is twice as big as normal. Oh yeah, I can actually just set 9 to have the spells in her fucking... There we go. There you go, Seth. There's using your noggin. Kunzite is way bigger. About twice as big. Uh, not, Unlimited 9's Kunzite as well. Let me see here, just to be... It also has slightly more max range to track the opponent from. It was... I noticed it was the same values that Unlimited 9's were higher, but they don't seem to actually, like... Oh, nope, there you go. Well, the increased size certainly helps adding more range, too. Yeah, so... <sighs> bigger Rock. Everyone loves Bigger Rock. Kunzite's fun. Morganite's even dumber. Let's see, what was Morganite? Morganite was... No. 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 Morganite was, like, something weird, like, red, green, green? No. Red, red, green. Oh, okay, then. <laughs> Morganite seeds. Uh, Morganite now hits four times. And uh, each hit acts like the second hit of normal Morganite, causing a small ground slide and a hard knockdown. Fun. Although, uh, this is going to be a little hard to demonstrate. If I do block switching? Yeah, that'll work. Um, the first hit is still... Uh, only the first hit is still a low, fortunately enough. So that was, those are not all lows, luckily. Just the first one. Just the first one that makes contact. The first one that makes contact in a given block stun period or a combo, that one is low. The rest are mids, fortunately. I'm surprised, honestly, that all four of the hits are not low, but they aren't. But yeah, obviously, easy fucking knockdown into follow-up combo. Normal 9 just gets two hits, although the vines on normal 9 do look bigger-ish? No, they, are, they aren't. They aren't. They aren't. They're the same size. Uvarovite! Rain! This is... Which, which one is this? I really wish they could just set which spell you want in the fucking thing. Red, red, green. There we go. Okay, Evolvite, Rain. This fires off... Uh, about five more projectiles, precisely. It also hovers closer to the ground in a tighter spread so that more of the, sh the shots will connect. So you can see... Nines is lower to the ground, and as because of that... Let me actually have Unlimited 9 jump into normal 9s. Counting them projectiles, uh, normal 9 spits out about 20, Unlimited 9 spits out 25, and because it's close to the ground, they're all going to connect a hell of a lot better, and do a shit ton of damage, and overall be much more obnoxious. That's about it for that. Androdite! Oh, fucking hell, I hate this one. Androdite is fucking gross. Which one was Onderdite? It was like water. No. I should have written these all down. There we go. Wind, wind, water. These fucking things move slower. So you have more time to control them. So blue, blue, green. Was it blue? Yeah, blue, green, green. And uh, they move slower, as you can see. 
They also don't launch as bad, or rather, they do. That more hits done, though, so you have more time to react off of it. Um, in addition, Nine vomits out two of these! That each do eight hits. Compared to the one of normal nines that does 16. The slower movement allows you to control it a lot better. Uh, the second orb will mirror the movements of the first, so you get weird bullshit like this. You can do a lot of dumb screen control shenanigans with it, like that as well. You have a lot more time to control it as well. Let's see... Yep, launches into wall bounce on hit, rather than just, uh... Yep, that's normal. Uh, deals about 4k if both orbs hit raw, which is completely unacceptable, and I really wish this move did not exist. <laughs> Celestite, slow field. Which one is... this is like blue, blue, green, right? Yeah, there we go. Unlimited 9s is like twice as big and covers about half the screen. Uh, the activation hit that occurs on airborne enemies... Also triggers a lot faster, knocking them down to the ground and leaving them unable to jump for the time being, but yeah, Unlimited Nines has a bigger feel. It doesn't necessarily track, though. Yeah, she kind of just dumps it right in front of her. Oh. Okay, well, that's another thing I forgot to document, I guess. To take a break from Celestite, apparently if you have a spell in your stock, but you hold uh, and press 2D instead, uh, Unlimited 9 will do Shoral, which is the move she does when she doesn't have a spell shock, uh, spell stock at all. How convenient. Anything else about Celestite here, despite being bigger, activates after being set? Yeah, that's, that's about it. She just kind of dumps it in front of her, though, so it doesn't really track the opponent like normal nines, but honestly, who really needs the tracking when you can just dump a field down that covers half the screen? And I'm pretty sure they last the same amount of time. Yeah, they last the same amount of time. I didn't see any differences in the duration of the slow field themselves. We can check just to be sure, though. We can have a... See which one goes away first. Oh, I guess normal nines last a little bit longer. In theory, anyways. Tough fight! Oh, this one's fucking fun, dude. Let's see, this is... No, this is blue, blue... Blue, green, red? No. I'm sorry, I still have to watch me struggle doing this. <laughs> Trying to find the right combination to get... No, that's that. No... Fucking hell, 9 is so confusing. Is it, can I just look at her command list? Can I just look at her command list? I can, thank god. Let's see, we want... Top fight, top fight, top fight, top fight. Water, water, fire, okay. The fairy. Normal 9 spits out one fairy that fires three times. Unlimited 9 spits out three fairies that fire three times. You can already see how quickly that can get obnoxious. That's literally all they needed to do to make it overkill. Neferite! The almighty fucking triple element apocalypse move. This move got really bonkers. This shit, uh, the best way to demonstrate is just have it activate at the same time, once again. Wait. Close enough. As you can see, Unlimited 9's clock on Normal 9 is counting down much faster. Uh, in fact, Nephrite for Unlimited 9 activates about 25% faster and is completely unblockable now to the point where not even barrier blocking will save you from the oncoming apocalypse that is sure to very much injure your health bar, and she probably gets a combo off of it and does, like, 6k meter list because it's unlimited 9, and she's fair and balanced. That's really all for Nephrite. Heliodor! I was tempted to not even include this one, honestly, because this one is one of those that seems like it didn't really have much done to it. 
it's one of those things that also kind of evidences that perhaps that this is maybe 1.0 release 9 <laughs> instead of updated 9. There we go. Yeah, wind and fucking water. Uh, Heliodor! Just have to be, put that on there. Heliodor. Unlimited 9's Heliodor doesn't have a hitbox. Heliodor. Nor does it have any sort... It's like it says it has armor, like normal 9's. Oh, huh, that's odd. But it doesn't have the hitbox. Is there anything? I guess her Heliodor is bigger? There's, there's really nothing noteworthy I could find on Heliodor otherwise. Citrine, on the other hand, in the last spell we're going to be talking about because it's the last one that I could find anything for because Amethyst. Amethyst doesn't seem to do anything different. Uh, nothing else seems to do anything different. Uh, Citrine or Mirror has an active hitbox on it uh, without needing to be kicked. Citrine. As you can see, Unlimited 9 walks on the normal one, breaks it. Uh, Unlimited 9s. Shock six times. Wait, really? Hold on. Send the normal mirror out. Oh, what the fuck, dude? Are you kidding me? You're, you're, you're shitting me, right? Wow! Do physical attacks not break the mirror or something? <laughs> or are, are, is it just treating... I, I don't understand. So, I guess Unlimited Nine's mirror can also absorb physical attacks, too. So, I guess you have to run up and block it? What the fuck, man? Oh, my God. Because her normals aren't projectiles! Normally, mirror only stops projectiles. <laughs> but Unlimited Nine's mirror counters... Normal nines. Normal moves. Crimson Raider isn't a projectile. And it also doesn't get, uh, become active fast enough. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pretend that I didn't see that. Speaking of Crimson Raider, on to the last of nine specials. Crimson Raider has... Just a little bit of upward and downward tracking. It's not super, super, like, drastic, as you can see. She doesn't, like, dive down at a 45-degree angle. But if the opponent is above or below her, 9 will gently tilt herself into the direction that they are in to try and hit them. Shit. Actually, I'd better do it with let them fly a bit. And, uh, you can combo off of it, because of course you can. Uh, as you can see, normal 9 can't really combo off it, but unlimited 9, if you time it well enough. Oh, I just got 5 fucking C off that. Well, I know for a fact, you can get 5A off of it. So, yeah, Crimson Red has slight tracking, you can 5A off of it. And in addition, something super fucking subtle is that Unlimited 9's Crimson Raider is microscopically faster than normal 9's. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, like, comprehensively have them both do it at the same time, but... It's a little hard, because the duration difference is actually super small, but as you can see, more often than not, Unlimited 9 will win the trade. Launches more upward rather than spinning downward, so that allows you to get that 5A link afterwards. Mavite Roar is luckily very easy to explain because all it really takes is a quick demonstration. Normal Mavite Roar. Unlimited Mavite Roar. <laughs> Similarly to Kunzite, Mavite Roar is a lot larger and has... A slight wall bounce mid-screen rather than just sending full screen and limited nines. Wall bounces back for a follow-up combo if you're fast enough because of course it does. 
or just do Crimson Raider if you're fucking lazy. It also will wall stick in the corner, because of course it does. Can't really do much unless they're already higher, though. Maybe if I do 3C, I can get 2B off, or 5B off of it. No, I can't. Let's go get the old-fashioned 5A after it. Normal 9's Mobite Roar. Does not wall stick in the corner, launches you really high, and you can take out of the air. Ugh. You, you can tell I'm just losing my will to do this as we go further on. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, similarly, to, similarly to Crimson Raider, except not just on the startup, it's kind of on the startup and the recovery. Unlimited 9's Mob Bite Roar is just faster all around. Although it's a lot easier to notice, judging by the animation that plays. You can see 9 is on the ground for less time. Navy Pressure is ever so slightly larger. It's a little, like, very, very subtle. But it is larger, just looking at the parameters of the projectiles. Uh, Navy Pressure also doesn't have a minimum distance anymore, so it works even if the opponent is right next to you. Unlimited 9 does not have the dead zone that normal 9 does. In addition, Navy Pressure, like her other default specials, is also very, very slightly faster. I think that was pretty synced up. Yeah, as you can see, if they both do it at the same fucking time... I fucked up that time. Fucked up again. It's very slight. But if they start moving at the same time, Unlimited Nines wins clean. Oh, I keep waiting until... There we go. I need to wait till I'm actually fully recovered. <laughs> Could do demonstrations like that. CMOS Gate! This move is fucking absurd. And I'm about to show you why. So, CMOS Gate. So, as you can see, uh, CMOS Gate is usually... Is, her quarter circle 4D is usually used to swap her active and her reserve spell stocks like that and then she can just switch between the two well unlimited nine says to hell with that and if you just do raw cmos gate with nothing in your reverse you're with your uh, reserve slot it just gives you a spell and if you do it again you get another spell and you can cast the spell and you can use it again to get more spells more fucking spells more spells for fucking days just keep using that cmos gate because you're getting spells for days. All day, every day. You want rain? Here's rain. You want Heliodor? Here's Heliodor. You have some more. Oh, it's so much fun. <sighs> that that's that's the only thing they did to CMOS. You just you just get spells. You just get spells. You don't have to you don't have to do any work for them anymore. You don't have to really have to work for them either at the start of it. But now you don't have to do anything. You just do CMOS gate from full screen. Navy pressure. Do CMOS gate afterwards. Get a free spell. <sighs> Calm down, Seth. Calm down. It's okay, the bad lady can't hurt you right now. Uh, Flax Nurture, a thing we discussed a while back, her her meterless reversal, you know, the one the one that's only punishable on instant block, because, you know, that's a good idea. To give to give give a top tier a meterless reversal. That's only punishable on What? What? Huh? I'm confused. I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> it's only punishable on instant block, I thought. Oh, they're not blocking. There we go. Okay, now I've just got to turn on block switching. I'm stupid. Her, her, her mirrorless reversal that's that's only punishable on, on, on instant block. Fuck, I switched too fucking soon. Yeah, her, her meterless reversal is only punishable on instant block. Yeah, uh, they buffed that. They, they they buffed Flax Nurture. So, for one thing, you don't need any spell stocks, obviously, to get a new Flax Nurture buff. You just do it, and like I said earlier, she just gets a random one. There's no order to it, really. She just sort of rolls on through them as you please. Not sure why you wouldn't just, like, use with a spell and then get the element you want, or cast spelling at the element you want. But, you know, having other options is always good. Let me see, um, it'll always, be the, it'll always be the element of the last normal used, um, 
the reversal blast that it causes will blow the poor bastard that got hit by it back full screen so they can be subjected to more of your torturous wind spell spam and full screen navy pressures because you know you, you did all that work to approach nine and start to pressure her and you think you're finally about to win the battle but then she just hits 214d and even if you block it she's safe so yeah Oh, and, and uh, to, to add insult to injury, in addition to having it launch farther with a uh, more untackable time, uh, it's also slightly faster. Is it, is it slightly faster? Is uh, Oh, it has slightly less recovery, so uh, Unlimited 9's Flak Charger is actually even less punishable on block. Is, is this punish Is there Unlimited 9 punishable instant block? Let's find out. Let's find out if, you know, if, if, it's, if, it's, if it's safe even on instant block. It's safe even on... It's safe even on instant block! <laughs> Who made this? Why? Why is it safe even on instant block? No! No! Why does she have a reversal that's safe on instant block? She has a safe DP that she can use at any time and spam it. And if you get hit by it, you get sent all the fucking way full screen. Uh, I'm fucking sad, dude. Let's let's. Oh, we're almost done. Thank God. We're almost done with this. Okay. 37 minutes of torture, only maybe about 8 more. Let's just get through it, Seth. So, she does have one new attack, and that is Half Circle Forward C, which is a horizontal Navy Pressure Punch. Uses the same line as Navy Pressure. Uh, does 2,200 damage, and sends the victim backward into a small ground slide. Uh, if you were in the corner... You can combo off of it because, of course, you can. Literally anything that Unlimited 9 does gets you a full combo for, like, 5k meter lists. Uh, this can also fatal counter, like, normal Navy pressure. And if it does have the unfortunate task of fatal countering, it gives a wall bounce back to 9 for beautiful 4k meter list combos uh, that don't take any skill. And if you do a real combo, that's probably easy 6k. Also, you can use this in the air if you feel like it. Can it, can it combo easily in the air? It probably can. It probably can. Let's let's find out, though, anyways. Might as well just go down the rabbit hole. Yes, it can! It combos very easily in the air. So there's your, there's your air combo ender. For mass quarter carry. <laughs> okay. Distortions. And I said this during Izanami's video, but I'm going to reiterate that. For some bizarre reason compared to Ragna and the Unlimited of the Past games, that Izanami... And 9, thank fuck for 9, do not have their distortions overdrive by default. So as you can see, Flame Punisher, the usual 13 hit laser beams. The only difference is, uh, are hers bigger? Hers are fucking bigger! What the hell? I didn't see anything like that. I actually, uh, I might have actually. Uh, whoops, on my part, I might have actually not actually checked the actual digits and data on Flame Punisher there. Wow, that's gross. So they actually did literally buff all three of her distortions. I thought Flame Punisher didn't have anything done to it, and I'm like, okay, this is still an okay move. A Cypher Effect does 10% more damage, but nope. Unlimited Nines are clearly larger. They're very clearly larger. They're about as big... Yeah, the second one's about as big as 9 herself. Okay, that's cool. As you can see, it doesn't go into the uh, overdrive follow-up as it normally does, though. Let's still do 25 hits. Oh, need to actually... You can rapid cancel and have the fucking laser stay out? Oh my god, that's gross. 25 hits, alright. 
Yeah, so Flame Punisher is slightly bigger. Now. Uh, slightly bigger. Cardinal Nova. <laughs> Cardinal Nova. Is slightly bigger. Still does the same sort of thing here. Still does the same sort of thing here. And I'm not... Oh my god. Okay, never mind. It's not the same. The follow-up explosions will trigger even if the main move misses and they will follow the 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 opponent across the screen. The follow-up explosions. <laughs> even if the move whips and go horizontally toward the opponent. Yep. So unlike Izanami, they they went and buffed all of her distortions. How dull. E even even her overdrive, her overdrive one. You know something they never really do. They they buff they buffed her overdrive distortions. Oh my god. You know what? That's not even it. I can't demonstrate this because I'm not playing Bullet or someone with other projectile involved. Me. But, uh, Normal 9's Cardinal Nova is a projectile. Guess what? Unlimited 9's? This, 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 this disjointed explosion that she activates in front of her? This is not, this is not a projectile. <laughs> this, this big-ass explosion in front of her. That, that's not a projectile. I, I'm not sure if that's, like, leftover from 9 1.0. I didn't see any, like, no, known changeless di uh, document that they, that that Cardinal Noah used to be a projectile, but, you know, if it, if it never was, then Unlimited 9 just has this. And it, it's just, it's just not a projectile. Th this is a projectile, but, but this isn't. Thank God we're almost done. As you're right, Inferno. This is probably the stupidest one. It goes full fucking screen. They they, they gave Unlimited Nine Hazma's Eternal Coils of the Broken bullshit. In fact, okay, never mind. Uh, Eternal Coils of the Broken bullshit would hit you even after you've jumped in the air. But uh, yeah, fortunately, this will just strike across the ground, so you can jump over it on reaction. But it's still a full screen grounded punish that does. A lot of damage still. Just stock up two spells here and crank overdrive here. That's fun. And, uh, overdrive has its own effect too. Overdrive will randomly, uh, similarly to your CMOS gate spam from before, where you get a spell that just pops into your reserve slot and you can just keep spamming them out if you use them enough. Well, if you're an Overdrive, you don't even need to go that extra mile because Overdrive will just have nine passively load spells into her active slot. Her active slot, not her reserve slot, so you can just automatically hit D and use them. Fucking ban this character. Someone, someone more skilled at modding the game than me, patch this character out, please. Get her out of here. I don't want her in Blaze Blue. I don't care how much story significance she has. I don't care if she's Kokonoe's mom, Jubei's wife, fucking Jin's grandma. That's not actually real, but fucking hell, I wouldn't be surprised. If this, fucking... this, this chick has to be on the fucking bad side of 50 or some shit. Last but not least, just like Izanami, as evidence to, to point, maybe point towards that she's not updated, her Exceed Excel does not have minimum damage like everyone else's does. It, it doesn't have 10% minimum damage or any minimum damage at all, unlike, unlike Normal 9, because she's updated to 2.0. She has she has minimum damage, so it's 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 a better it's a better combo ender. Long's the video. 
45 minutes. Okay, well, that was 45 minutes of agonizing pain and suffering and realizing even still that there was stuff I was not aware of concerning Nine and her obnoxiously, like, on-display jiggle physics on her idle pose that I, I really just wish would would go away because that's literally the only people the, the only reason people play her beside her placement on the tier list is her fucking cup size okay well as you can see i have i have very clearly lost my my will to go on i'm not even sure if i'm gonna be able to do the mod work i wanted to today after witnessing this i'm, I'm just gonna end the video i'm, I'm sorry guys <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry i exposed you all to this uh that, that'll be it I, I hope to see you all in the next upload. Not really sure what's going to be. Uh, we'll, we'll see what I have done by the time next week rolls around. And uh, hope to catch you later. Uh, if you wish to, to ease my pain and suffering, uh, please comfort my trauma in the comments. And maybe if you aren't subscribed already... Do do that because I I'm not I'm not trying to shill subscribers, but but I'm, I I do want to get to a hundred, and if, if if we get to a hundred, I, I do I, I I'll, I'll 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 just get back to that later. I'll uh I'll see you guys later. What's our astral command again? Okay, cool.